Michael Franti is a musician, humanitarian, filmmaker, and an activist who is recognized as a pioneering force in the music industry. He believes that there is a great battle taking place in the world today between cynicism and optimism. So he made his most al recent album, Stay Human, Volume 2, his highest charting album to date, to remind himself and anyone who's listening that there is still good in the world and that it's worth fighting for. The songs on this album were inspired by his new self-directed documentary, Stay Human, which we screened here in the office last week, and has won an array of awards at film festivals worldwide. Throughout his multi-decade career, he has earned four Billboard number one singles with triumphantly hopeful hits such as Sound of Sunshine and Say Hey I Love You. Michael owns Soulshine Bali, the leading yoga retreat hotel in Ubud, Bali, and co-founded Do It For The Love with his wife, Sara Aga Franti, a wish-granting organization that brings people living with life-threatening illnesses, children with severe challenges, and wounded veterans to any live concert anywhere in the world. To date, they have granted more than 8,000 wishes. So Google Boulder, let's say hey to Michael Franti. <laughs> How you feeling? People up top, how you feeling? This side makes a noise. All right, all right. <laughs> are we gonna play first, or what are we gonna do? Oh, we were gonna, we were gonna answer questions. Oh, let's so answer questions. Play, let's do that. Play? You okay. wanna do that? <laughs> all right, just to let you all know. I've been studying all night, so. I know, really, this is going well. Um, there's a microphone over on the side there if anybody wants to come up. Oh, there was a microphone, it's in my hand. Okay. I'm gonna ask a few questions. Okay. And then <laughs> we're gonna open it up to everybody in the audience. Okay. Um, so we'll start off, first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, welcome to Boulder. Thank you. Uh, start you off with a couple of quick ones. Okay. Get your warmed up. Softballs, here, here we go. Softballs, here we go. Last thing you Googled. Uh, uh, um, well, last night, uh, I went to sleep right after the Warriors lost. I was really depressed, and I fell asleep. And then I woke up to call my wife and my son Taj, and then I thought, oh, well, I'm just gonna watch this thing on Netflix, um, this series called The Way They, When They See Us, which is about the um, Central Park Five. And so like six and a half hours later, I finished the series <laughs> at like <laughs> three in the morning. And so I started Googling, the uh, uh, district attorney and all the lawyers in the um, thing. So that was the last thing I Googled. It was like about 4, 4 a.m. And so I'm sitting there going, 4 a.m., I'm Googling stuff. And like, so, you know, the people at Google, when I, when I search, there's this huge warehouse. And then someone runs down, opens this encyclopedia, finds the information I want, and then they run back and they type it in back to me. And so I was like, you guys are all like awake at that time doing that stuff for me. Like, thank you guys. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So That's my image of Google, by yeah. the way. That's it's exactly. like somehow stuck in the 1940s. Like there's this room with people with encyclopedias and they put them in those, these canisters, you know, they get your, they put it in there and then they shove it in that duct and it goes. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> and then it comes back with the information. Yeah. It's you know? like when you go to the bank. If, yes. if you still go yeah. to the bank, I don't know. In, in, in like 1932, <laughs> exactly. if you went to the bank. Last yeah. time I went to a bank. All right, so what's uh, your favorite song that you perform? Favorite song that I perform is, it, it changes all the time. It's usually the w most recent one that I've written. I get excited to like yeah. see if it's any good, really, you know, and, and try it out on people. So I've, we got a few, maybe I'll play one today. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right, favorite song someone else performs? Uh, well, I love... Victoria's music, and anytime she sings, I cry. And so, uh, because she's so good and I feel so shitty about how bad I sing. <laughs> no, she sings really emotional, beautiful songs, and they really, they really move me. And I'm also really inspired by the guys that I play music with, Carl and the other guys in my band. They inspire me um, because of their just infinite wealth of musical you know, just abilities that they have and, and history that they, that they are aware of. And, um, but I love storytellers who can make you dance. So I love Bob Marley for that reason, Marvin Gaye, Johnny Cash, 
John Lennon. I love people who tell a great story about how much they care about the world, and then they put it right next to a song about how they much they love their girlfriend or how sad they are because she just broke up with them, you know, whatever. <laughs> or he just broke up with her or her, she just broke up with she or whatever. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's what I like. All right. Uh, we just watched the trailer of mm -hmm. Stay Human and we screened it here last week. Mm -hmm. um, for anybody who hasn't had a chance to see it, anything you want to tell us about it? Well, has anybody seen it here? Yeah. Oh, right on. Thanks. Well, um, basically, it's, it's a film that's about my personal battle with... Um, cynicism and pessimism and depression and anxiety and how um, I get out into the world and I meet people in my travels everywhere I go who are just ordinary people who are dealing with extraordinary circumstances and I see the way that they overcome them and it re it, it reminds me of what it means to be a human again and that none of us are born perfect and we're all in this world together just trying to make it through this life and trying to find joy and trying to um, um, you know just be our authentic selves and show up every day for the people that we care about and um, so it's a really super inspiring uplifting film that is about my depression <laughs> and how I, and but and really how, I, how I've overcome it and um, and and so uh, yeah Awesome. Yeah. So I actually got a sneak peek when we were together uh, last summer in, in Bali at mm -hmm. your Soul Shine Soul Rocker Retreats. Yeah. How did you come up with the idea for the Soul Rocker Retreat and, and also Soul Shine Bali as a hotel? Well, I, I, had, I make these plans every now and then, like a five-year plan, like here's what I want to do over the next five years. So I made this plan, and, and I live in San Francisco, which is like the coldest place in the universe. Um, <laughs> if you've ever lived there, it's like it's always colder than you expect, you know, like, oh, I think I'll just put on this like little sweatshirt and then you're like, fuck, I wish I had a down jacket. <laughs> I wish I had an umbrella. I wish I, had, you know, it's like you're never quite warm enough. It's not like Florida. You wake up and you're like, oh, God, I got to take off my tank top. <laughs> you know? And, and so um, I thought, God, I want to build like a warm weather home. And so I went on vacation to Bali. And, you know, I didn't have a lot of money at the time, and I still really don't. But I, I was like, fuck, I'll buy a patch of dirt here. And then one, every year we'll build like a room onto it. And, and I did it with my girlfriend. And, and we had this grand plans of this home. And, and eventually we'll retire there. And, um, and then so we bought this dirt. And we built the foundation for the house. And then she went to Burning Man, and then she broke up with me. <laughs> And, and I was like, fuck, what am I gonna do with this patch of concrete in the jungle? And so I was like, well, I'll just build it like a little bit bigger than I thought and I'll invite people to come do yoga there. And if they do, then like it'll all work out, you know? And so it was kind of like if you, if you build it, they will come, you know? And, and so uh, they did. People started showing up and practicing yoga. And the intention behind it was I wanted to build a place where people could just hit the reset button. You know, like people, we all live in these very stressed lives and, and I wanted it to be a place where people from all over the world could come and just practice yoga, eat good food, meet with, uh, you know, people that would become lifelong friends and, um, and just really hit the reset button, yeah. Mission accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the last time, since the last time we've seen you, you have mm -hmm. Baby Taj. Baby Taj, yeah. Yes. So um, how do you think the world's changed for you as a parent okay. since you've raised your older sons? Okay, so just a little bit of backstory. I have one son who's 20 years old. I have another son who's 32 years old. And I have a, a nine-month baby Taj. <laughs> so if you're thinking about being a parent and you have three boys... Space them 32 years apart. That's just my advice for you. And um, so uh, I think the world, well, one way it's changed is, is social media, you know? And my, I saw it really a lot with my second son, Ade, who right when he was hitting high school is when social media really started to emerge. And I saw from when my older son was in high school, his his peers and the, and the peer pressure was just like amongst themselves, you know? But then now with, the, my, with my second son, it was like every day he was judging himself by what he saw of other people's like, you know, oh, he's on vacation and he's doing a handstand and he's on a cliff and he's diving into a fiery pit of snakes and he's coming out and he's got a six pack of abs, hey! Yeah. You know, and that's what his, you know, that's how he was kind of like judging his, who he was against all this mirror of other people's, you know, 
best life, you know. And um, it, it was it was really challenging for him, and um, and as it is for all of us. I mean, it's challenging for me too in that way. And um, so I think that that's that's one of the main things. And then the, and then Trump. <laughs> like, and I, 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 I don't mean that in the political sense necessarily, but I just mean like, uh, like never before in my lifetime did we ever have a president who was so mean spirited towards other people all the time. And it's like, how do I tell my kids not to, you know, be nasty to other people when they're like, well, the president does it every day. Like, the president calls people bad names every day. Why shouldn't I be able to do it? You know. And so, I think there's just like this greater. Um, thing as a parent in the world of the way that we perceive the world through our media and social media and, and the politics aren't like Trump just is kind of reflects that really more than he created it. You know? yeah. So um, in the film, you talk a little bit about your, your struggles with depression, mm -hmm. and yeah. we screened the film as part of Mental Health Awareness Month. So could you share yes. a little bit about how you find support when you're struggling? Yeah, well, I mean. I grew up in this really crazy mixed family. My mother's, my birth mother's Irish, German, and Belgian. My birth father's African American and Nottaway Indian from the mountains of Virginia. But I was adopted into the Franti family, who are second generation immigrants from Finland. They had three kids of their own. And one Sunday, my mom went to church. She heard there was 149,000 children in America in need of permanent homes through adoption. So she came home to Mr. Franti. She was like, Hey, Charlie, I know we've already got three kids of our own. And we're college students, and we're living in married student housing. <laughs> but I think we should adopt another one. <laughs> and that was me. They got me. They adopted me. <laughs> and so, um, and then they adopted another African American son. And so I grew up in the super mixed melting pot. And just to round things out, I have one sister who's a lesbian and one brother who's a police officer. And my mom taught primary education in public schools um, for 35 years. And she would take care of all of us kids. And um, then she would, uh, you know, she takes care of 30 kids at school, and then she'd come home to us five kids at home. And meanwhile, my father was an alcoholic and wasn't really present for the family in the way that he perhaps could have been. And so um, I grew up in this house where it was just like, you know, uh, I, was, I felt alone a lot. You know, I felt like I, I looked different. I was, I was adopted. There was, you know, alcoholism. There was, you know, uh, it was just, you know, a lot of craziness. And so I would spend a lot of time by myself, just kind of like in isolation, being uh, fearful of my dad yelling at my mom what was going to happen next. And I didn't do really well in school. Um, and my, my outlet was just kind of like music. I would take myself away through music. Um, but I really didn't express myself. And so that's all a long way to say that the thing that I've learned to do uh, in terms of my own battling my own depression and anxiety has been that it's uh, um, learning to be able to express what I am feeling and what's, what's stored up inside me. And um, it's kind of like a muscle that you have to exercise. You know, it's like you can't just go into this like pit of depression and go, oh, I'm going to snap out of it, you know. But it's like something you have to practice during times when things are, are going pretty good for you. And the, the, the way that I do it is that I've learned if I can change my thoughts, I can change my feelings. If I can change my thoughts, I can change my feelings. So it's like, it's like just the classic glass half empty, half full thing. It's like, how am I perceiving today? Am I, am I grateful for this morning? Or is it like, oh God, I gotta go talk to all those people at Google. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and so, you know, it's tuning that way. And then also, um, uh, uh, listening to music actually really does help me because it helps me to f let these emotions out in me that I never knew were there. So, and sometimes it's like hearing a beautiful song that the words really mean something. And sometimes it's like I just hear the first three notes of Miles Davis's My Funny Valentine and it's so stirring to me that it brings me to tears and then that gives voice to something that's inside. And then yoga has been another great practice for me too because we put ourselves in these really uncomfortable positions and then we listen to the voice that's happening in our head and we go, where's this voice coming from? Like, you can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not trying hard enough. And then you learn to breathe through it and let go of those things. And then, um, uh, and then seeing how other people do it has is really uh, been, been a great teacher for me. And then the final thing is 
chocolate. It pretty much works every time. <laughs> it's a good, chocolate for me is actually like a really good little, like, like I don't want to start eat, eating chocolate forever, but sometimes it's just the thing that like can make me feel like, okay, now I can face the day again. <laughs> Let's go back to it, yeah. Awesome. So if anybody wants to ask a question, come on over to that mic stand over there. We'll get going uh, with some of those, but I have one or two. Um, so new film, new album, yeah. new baby. Mm -hmm. What's next? Well, um, another baby. Uh, yeah. You're the first to hear about it. Oh, really? Oh. My wife doesn't even know yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like in the next three years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> my manager's like, what? We've got this tour <laughs> lined up. <laughs> you just said it on Google. There's a guy who's writing it down in an encyclopedia somewhere to be searched in the future. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, what's next is we've, we've got this, this, this tour that we're going to be on for the, uh, pretty much the end of December. And, and this is kind of the, for, the, the kickoff for it right here right with you guys. Yeah. And um, so we're doing this thing called The Party in the Park in Denver tonight. And we're showing the film. And we've got a yoga class happening there. We've got a great DJ who's going to be playing music out there, food trucks, kid zone, face painting, all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, dozens of nonprofits from around this area that we want to help get the word out about what they do. Um, I'm working on a new record, and uh, so we want to have a new record out early next year. And um, but apart from that, we're just we, we you know we Carl and I have been playing music now together for 25 years. <laughs> and uh, we just changed underwear for the first time yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Not supposed uh, to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the problem was that Carl changed with me and I changed with him, so, yeah. <laughs> no, um, we love, we love well, I, was, I was saying that because we are more excited about the music that we're making today than we ever have been. And after 25 years of doing something, when you feel like that sense of like, wow, this is better than anything we've ever done, ever, and, um, it's exciting. And so um, we're super excited about this tour and ready, ready to rock out. Yeah. All right, we need you guys over there with your questions because I'm not going to run around with the mic. Or just yell them out and I'll just repeat it if you... Okay, yeah, we can do that. Right, I have one yeah. more before we start yelling out. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so you have our attention here. Yeah. Uh, when this re-airs, you'll have the attention of a lot of Googlers mm -hmm. around the world. What's one problem? If we could work on one problem here at Google, in your opinion, what do you think it would mm, be? God. Well, there's so many. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, make Earth cooler. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I, I think like changing the dialogue around, like is it climate change or like, yesterday I saw this interview with, um, uh, with, with President Trump, he's in England and he said, do you believe in climate change? I'm like, climate change isn't something you believe in or not. It's do you understand the science that's happening today? And so we need to make that, like, we need to change the dialogue around that. And that's why I say make earth cooler. Like it shouldn't be like global warming, global warming. It's like, let's work to make earth cooler. So that's, that's, that's one way. Um, um, and, and I think that just uh, we need to have, now that there's been like a sort of version 1.0 of social media, there needs to be like a critique of it and then there needs to be education around how it's, you know, it's like, you know, we don't take acid every night, we just take it like once a summer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Um, you know, that's what we learned about drugs, you know, I mean, um, and so <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. We have to learn, like, how do we teach about, um, how do we teach about social media and the way that our, you know, all of us perceive it and, and the way, the amount that we use it and the ways in which we use it. And then understanding that it's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, most of it's, you know, just the best version of what people are putting up and not everything that, that they are and we and so there just I think there needs to be education about that and awareness about it and now that we've had this first wave there needs to be like um, you know conversation and writing and critique and analysis and 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 then some teaching yeah yeah and more chocolate <laughs> all right thanks Rich. Hi. 
I don't know if this is a question so much as a statement, but I'll, I'll see if I can frame it sure. as a question. But okay. <laughs> in, in a liberal bastion like Boulder, yeah. um, the schools are hammered, and I'm very liberal, but mm -hmm. are hammered with global warming and all these things. I have a kid who has anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so they don't offset it enough with the little bits. Like, mm -hmm. what do you do every day to get up and not just be depressed, mm -hmm. right? Because every class you're taking is about equity, global warming, yeah. uh, plastic in the ocean, everything else, especially mm -hmm. in a place like Boulder, which is great, yeah. but can also be, like you said, mm -hmm. make you very cynical. Yeah. Uh, well, I think the, that uh, you know, when I get up every day and I, I get out into the world and I experience being around other people, it, it instills in me the idea that not everything is what we just are perceiving in the news you know it's like if you read the, the, or listen to the news it's like it's the nightly shit show report you know like all the worst things that happen in america today here they are and it's easy to get down when you do that but when you get out and you walk down the street you actually like see people smiling if you see somebody walking their dog and see somebody who maybe needs a you know so, someone who's homeless and that you can maybe have a conversation with and and you get out in the world and you 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 start to see that the world isn't exactly the way that it is that we perceive. And then in a macro sense, you start to, you know, you, you travel, you go to other places, you can, you can start to see the world in a different way. And that's one of the advantages that we have living in this country and the economy that we do, that we can do that. And I think it's important for people to, to do that. But I think that um, there's a lot to be said um, for, uh, we, you know, my wife and I, sorry, we have a, uh, saying in our house, it's kind of like our family motto, and it's it's inside of our wedding ring, and it's be your best, serve the greater good, and rock out wherever you are. And what that means is like it's important to have fun, like like it's important, like be your best, like try to improve yourself, try to like have new experiences, and then serve the greater good, like do what you're talking about with all the you know, teaching, and try to make the world a better place. But then go have fun. And like appreciate life and have gratitude and dance and play and sing and make incredible food and share it with people and so that's it like rock out yeah whoa Hi. you did you made it up there way to go trust me if you knew me getting the mic on <laughs> okay. um so your movie and part of y'all's mission together as a group is trying to get people out of cynicism into optimism i mm -hmm. assume and so I assume that you guys are thinking about what environments really fertilize both of those mental states that people tend to get in. And I was wondering if you could talk about some of the environments that you see the two being fertilized in, so we could maybe jump into the more positive, if that makes sense. Yeah, question. yeah, I mean. I just feel like you see the whole world, and you go into places where, if you're in mm -hmm. Gaza Strip, people are, are expecting complete you know, pessimism, but then you're with a child singing and you mm -hmm. have that experience. So maybe some places that have opened up your heart and helped keep it open. Yeah, well, I, I mean, when I was in, I've been to Gaza twice and, and you're right, it's like people living, you know, less than $2 a day, most of the population does there and they're living in a constant war zone and it's essentially like a fenced in little city state basically. And, and, and there's constant, you know, violence and military intervention there. And um, people, yeah, you're right, you'd expect people to be very bummed out. And, but there's, there's a lot of like, hope and there's optimism and there's people who are trying to do really good stuff there. And I found that in, in, in any situation where I travel to where people um, are hit really hard either by war or by economics or, or um, you know, whatever things are, are pushing them down systemically or uh, that people find the resilience in themselves and that it's important that you have leadership. It's important that people who are able to find it are, are able to like share it and say, come on, let's, let's do this. Let's be here. Let's be present for each other. Let's, and, and that's why, I mean, that's, that's kind of our musical mission as a group. And, and that's why, you know, I've got Victoria and Carl and they, you know, we're all, we're all about that. Yeah of disintegration we take one step back but together we can take two steps forward yeah Thanks. right on thank you what's that oh when kevin durant comes back i'll be super happy <laughs> but i'm optimistic the warriors are going to win the next game <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
what's my favorite festival to play? Um, oh, man. You know, I really like the Byron Bay Blues and Roots Festival in Australia. It's a really incredible festival because of the diversity of music that they have there. They have every style of music from hip hop to just a, a, an old guy with a wooden guitar playing, you know. And um, it's, it's just, uh, uh, and it's in these two massive old circus tents. And so everybody has to like get in, in you know, and people are close to get, you know, it's like 20,000 people rubbing shoulders and dancing together. And so I love that. Um, my favorite venue in the world, though, is here at Red Rocks. You know, where we're yeah. playing, to, uh, playing tomorrow night. And I, and I, I like I, every time I'm there, I'm like, oh, like you walk in, and it's like, oh, you know, the <laughs> angels start to sing, and you're like, holy fuck, this place is so beautiful. It's like playing in the Grand Canyon, and you're like, God, it's so beautiful. Why did they build the music venue here? <laughs> and you're like, it's so beautiful. Thank God they freaking built a music venue here. You know. Uh, um, and so, uh, yeah, it's it's a, such a great place to play, and then and it, and it attract, it's like a musical vortex. Like you, when my band plays there, people travel from all over the world to come and, and be there, and and it's what I like also about Coloradans. Who, who, it's like, oh, okay, man, like hey, you know, there's just like show down the road, and like let's get some sunflower seeds and some music, <laughs> and, and we'll hop in my VW van or my Subaru. <laughs> and then we'll go, and you're like, where is it? And they're like, oh, it's four hours. And you're like, fuck it, let's go. Like, like they don't think twice to drive like four hours to a concert, and that's why, you know, Coloradans are you know, arguably the best music fans in the world. <laughs> All right, last chance. Oh, come on up. Oh, just, you could just shout it out. Mm -hmm. She asked when. I'm sorry, you didn't hear the last one. Yeah. Um, she was just, just asking when did my passion for music and activism and all these things uh, happen. And it, it really started from my beginnings in music. So um, when I was a kid growing up, I everybody in my family played music, all, all, all the other four brothers and sisters. Um, and my mom played organ in the church, and um, I played basketball. And I took one piano lesson, and the lady who taught me piano scared me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like four or five, and there's this little old lady, she's sweet as can be, and I go home, and my mom's like, I, I told her, I'm not, never going back. She's like, what, what happened? And I go, she smells like old lady perfume. And I never went back. I never, and I regret it to this day. I never learned to play piano, but um, I was surrounded by music all the time, and um, it was the thing that I listened to, as I mentioned before. When I get bummed out, I just put my headphones on and just go away, you know. And so when I got to university, my dorm room was above the campus radio station, and at the time, our school was there was a movement at the school to divest from South Africa. It was when Nelson Mandela was still in prison, and so I was impassioned by that and part of my passion for social justice came from being this kid who always felt like they were left out I mean which I was so different from everybody in every situation that I was in and I'd get bullied a lot and picked on a lot and and so I really I've always had like an empathy for other people who are feel that sense of being an outsider and so that's where my desire to get involved in social justice was so I started writing poems about about South Africa and divestment, and I started performing them at rallies, at schools and stuff, and then this group of um, people that I started hanging out with, they started, w they were percussionists, and I started doing it with these percussionists, we didn't have any place to rehearse, so we went out to this old abandoned shipyard, and we beat on pieces of metal, and then we eventually brought those pieces of metal into nightclubs, and we had this like industrial, Afro-political punk rock band that was called the Beatniks, and and we were on um, Jella Biafra from the Dead Kennedys uh, label, Alternative Tentacles, and we got in a little white van and we started traveling around the country, sleeping on floors and playing music, and that's how I got started. So my passion for social justice um, was always there from the seeds of my music, you know. Yeah. Um, 
which musical instrument can, can play the most emotion? Um, well, I, f I think it really has to do with who is, whoever is playing it. But um, the piano is super expressive because um, you have all the keys at your, available at your fingertips and so many different combinations of chords that can, that can move you and rhythm and um, single notes and, and melody and you can make people dance, you can make people cry, you can do everything with it, and I can't play one note on it. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I chose the guitar because I wanted to play on the street, and I wanted to be able to take my music with me wherever I went, and so it was like the most portable way for me to be able to play it. And this guitar here is named Mama Brown. It's really the only guitar I play, whether I'm playing at Red Rocks or playing here or playing on street corner or playing at home. And um, uh, it's named after my grandma Brown, who worked as a domestic servant, like a house cleaner, basically servant, really, until she was in her 90s. And last time I went to go see her, she was in uh, the hospital. I get this call, come quick, grandma's here. She's, you know, could be the last moment. So I go and I see her and um, I walk in the room. She's got tubes in her nose. She's hooked up to a heart meter. And my, you know, I'm scared and, and I, she's asleep and I kiss her on the forehead and she wakes up and she goes, Michael, is that you? And I go, yeah, Grandma, it's me. I go, Grandma, why are you here in the hospital? And she goes, because I'm pregnant. <laughs> I said, Grandma, who got you pregnant? <laughs> Reverend Mitchell. <laughs> At 96 years old. <laughs> she goes, why do you think I'm in the hospital? I'm old. <laughs> And so she just had this way of taking any situation and being able to transform it with her humor, her love, or cooking for somebody, or playing music, or doing something. And so I, I had hoped that this guitar could do this for other people, and so I named it after her. Yeah. All right, let's do it. You want to play All some right, songs? All right, we play some music, yeah. <laughs> background that's not yeah. yeah. thank you so I got this is uh, Carl Young on the bass from Spearhead it's the mighty Victoria Canal here on the piano and the vocals and um, you know my my um, my son who's 20 he when he was 15 he was diagnosed with a rare form of kidney disease and um, his kidneys are, are failing and he's gonna need a transplant in probably the next 18 months or so. And as a parent, it's like the hardest thing you could ever go through is like thinking that your kid, uh, or that you might possibly live longer than your child. And so uh, as we were going through this whole thing, every day there'd be these moments when um, we'd be waiting for a test result or there'd be some worry in our house. And, um, uh, We'd be sitting there together, and then my son, he's like, he's like, he's six four, weighs 230 pounds, big kid, you know. He would come up and like just give me this big hug. He'd be like, Dad, we're gonna be all right. We're gonna get through this. Or there'd be an extra kiss on the cheek, or there'd be an extra I love you. And what we thought at first was really gonna like just rip our family apart, it actually ended up bringing our family closer together. And uh, one of the kind of rules that we made in our house. As you can imagine, there's not a lot of rules in the front of the house. <laughs> it's kind of like, don't leave the toilet seat up in the middle of the night. <laughs> and this rule, which is that nobody cries alone. And what that means is that no one is allowed to just be by themselves and be sad. If you need to cry, um, someone else has to come and sit with you, hold your hand, just let you know that they're, you're there with them until the point when they say, I'm okay to be it by myself. You know, there is a time when you, when you should just cry alone. But um, I wrote this song for my son and it goes like this. Whenever you stumble Whenever your problems overload Whatever your worries Just know that your heart don't beat alone And I will be waiting with a hand to hold on to Cause in this home Nobody cries alone So when you're feeling all alone I'll be shining on Like 
like a starlight waiting to guide you home. And like a candle holds a light, I will hold you through the night. I'll remain so nobody cries alone. Whenever you tremble, whenever your voice can't find the words, whatever your troubles, just know that your heart don't beat alone. And I will be waiting with a hand to hold on to. Cause in this home, nobody cries alone. So when you're feeling all alone, be shining on like a starlight waiting to guide you home and like a candle holds the light I will hold you through the night I'll remain so nobody cries alone nobody cries alone nobody cries alone I remain so nobody cries alone And every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright I know Every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright I know Problems overload, whatever your worries. Just know that your heart don't beat alone, and I will be waiting with a hand to hold on to. Cause in this home, nobody cries alone. Nobody cries alone. Nobody cries alone. I remain. So nobody cries alone Nobody cries alone Nobody cries alone I remain So nobody cries alone Put your hands up high, y'all And every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright I know Every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright Every little thing is gonna be alright I know So whenever you tremble Whenever your voice can't find the words Whatever your troubles Just know that your heart don't beat alone And I will be waiting from today to 99, through the darkness, so nobody cries alone. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all. Put your hands together for me one more time. I wake up in the morning at six o'clock. They say there may be rain, but the sun is hot. I wish I had some time just to kill today. And I wish I had a dime for every bill I got to pay. Some days you lose, you win, and the water is high as the tide's roaring. So I jump back in where I learned to swim. Try to keep my head above it the best I can. That's why here I am, waiting for the storm to pass me by. That's the sound. Of sunshine coming down, coming down. That's the sound of sunshine coming down, coming down, down, down. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. One, two. Uh. I saw my 
my friend Bobby, he said, what's up, man? You got a little work or 20 to lend. I opened up my hand, he said, I'm glad to see. They could take away my job, but not my friends, you see. Here I am, waiting for this storm to pass me by. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. Coming, coming down. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. Tell me how you're feeling, y'all. I wanna go where the summer never ends With my guitar on the beach there with all my friends The sun's so hot and the waves in motion And everything smells like suntan lotion The ocean and the people so sweet So kick off your shoes and relax your feet They say that miracles are never ceasing Every single soul needs a little releasing Stereo bump until the sun goes down I only wanna hear that sound That's the sound of sunshine coming down Coming down, that's the sound of sunshine coming down. Carl, play some bass for us, man. And that's the sound of sunshine coming down, coming, coming down. That's the sound of sunshine coming down. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. So I want to tell you about how I met Victoria. Um, one day I was just flipping through my Instagram and I follow a lot of musicians, so a lot of musicians come up on the Explore feature and I see this woman who was playing uh, a guitar, or maybe it might have been a ukulele, guitar. guitar. Mm -hmm. She's playing a guitar with one arm and I just had the sound off and I was like, wow, I gotta turn the sound on. And I <laughs> turned the sound on and I'm like, wow, she's incredible. She sings so beautifully. And I started watching all her videos, and I see she's playing piano and ukulele and all this. I was like, wow, she's incredible. And so I, I just sent her a direct message, and I was like, Victoria, my name's Michael Fronti. I don't know if you know my music or not, but I, I really dig what you do. I'd love to write and record a song with you. I want you to open up for me on tour. The first show is at Red Rocks on June 1st. <laughs> Can you be there? <laughs> this was last year, by the way, yeah. Yeah, it was last year. Um, I was at school, I was a freshman in college at that point, and I saw that Instagram message. Uh, <laughs> and then I dropped out of school. <laughs> That's pretty much the pretty way that went. It was yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Pretty easy choice. Yeah. yeah. And then we did like 130 shows together last yeah, year. Yeah. yeah. So, so I invited her down to Nashville where we were making this. Uh, record and recording all the songs for the film, and oh, it's okay. Don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> I think I might have said Siri in there somewhere <laughs> along the way or something. Uh, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I invited her to Nashville, and I said, uh, "Hey, Victoria." I told her, but like my whole life story in five minutes. I was like, I was brought up in this family. It's really, 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 really get picked on a lot as a kid and bullied and all this stuff. And I had this mom who's really supportive of me. And she's looking at me like, dude, I just met you. <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you sharing all this? And, and, and then I said, well, the reason I'm sharing this is because I, I want to know, like, what's your story? Like, how did you grow up? And tell me about you. So. Well, my face might have been saying that, like, dude, what are you saying? But on the inside, what I was feeling was like, oh my gosh. I can relate so deeply because I was always the, the disabled kid at school, a designated one-armed girl, and because um, I was born like this. And uh, 
I moved around a lot. It was sort of hard to fit in. And I loved when you told me your story because it, it just really resonated with me being the odd one out. Um, I never had any heroes who looked like me. Everybody was so symmetrical <laughs> in the media. And, um, and my mom was pretty cool too. And she told me that, she always encouraged me. She said, um, there's an excellent opportunity when you don't have any heroes who look like you because then you can be the very first one. So she gave me the courage. So we started um, writing this song. And first we were like, oh, let's write a song that's about being bullied, but not just about being bullied, but like how it is that we hold on to our authentic self and speak up for ourselves in the world. And um, one of the ways that we were seeing like the furthest extreme of that was like gun violence and, and school shootings. And we started writing this song like right a month, about a month before the Parkland sh shooting happened. And, um, and so uh, we wrote the song, we started making the video, and then I, I, when I made the video, the video is all, features all families who have been affected by gun violence. Last year, there was 39,773 people in America who died from gun violence, and it's just way too many. And so I, I spent the, a month traveling around the country talking to families who had been involved in the Route 91 shooting in Las Vegas at the concert there, and people from the Orlando Massacre, the Pulse nightclub, Parkland, people who had been involved in street violence all over the country, um, talked to people who had, had family members who took their own lives with guns, talked to families who, um, or talk to individuals who had spent 25 years in prison for murder who are now back out on the street and trying to um, affect change in their neighborhood and prevent that from happening. And uh, I, just re I, I just learned that, that, that there's nowhere in this country that uh, is, is unaffected by gun violence, every single one of us, and especially in this state and so recently. And um, tomorrow is June 7th, and it's a National Gun Violence Awareness Day. And so we've invited everyone at our concert and people all around the country are gonna be wearing orange. It'd be a great thing for people at Google to do is to wear orange tomorrow. Just to say that we recognize, it's not a political statement saying you're one way or the other, it's just saying that this is a problem that all of us need to address. And, and so we wrote this song together and it's called The Flower and it's about the fact that we believe that every single person in America, in America can be a part of the healing that our nation needs today. Uh, to, to, to be able to reduce and end gun, gun violence. We can be the healing When you're feeling all alone We can be the reason To find the strength to carry on in a world that's so divided, we shall overcome. We can be the healing. We can be the flower in the gun. We can be the healing. We can be the flower in the gun. What could I say to my son or to my daughter if they came and asked me about these days? What kind of reason could I give for all the hate? standing in the way wish I could tell them that nobody's gonna judge them and every stranger on the block is gonna love them no bully in the world could ever hurt them but I can't say that today no 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 one could ever take your pride from you Speak your truth and let your spirit fly Cause we could be the healing When you're feeling all alone We could be the reason To find the strength to carry on In a world that's so divided We shall overcome We could be the healing We could be the flower in the gun we could be the healing, we could be the flower in the gun. What could I say to every woman who was ever told by a man don't try to reach too high? What could I say to every girl who was betrayed and told to keep the pain locked inside? Wish I could say nobody's ever gonna judge. 
change me Every stranger on the block is gonna love me No bully in the world is gonna hurt me But I can't say that and be No, no, no one could ever take my pride from me Speak my truth and let my spirit fly Cause we could be the healing when you're feeling all alone, we could be the reason to find the strength to carry on in a world that's so divided. We shall overcome. We could be the healing. We can be the flower in the gun. We could be the healing. We could be the flower in the gun. It's like dropping pebbles into the ocean seeing them spread ripples around the world. Let me hear you say, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, everybody yeah. say, In a world that's so divided, we shall overcome. We could be the healing. We could be the flower in the gun. We could be the healing. We could be the flower in the gun. We could be the healing. We could be the flower in the gun. World so divided, we shall overcome. flower in the gun we can be the healing we can be the flower in the gun Victoria Canal we got a couple more songs for you um, this is one I wrote in Woody Harrelson's bathroom Woody called me, and we'd been friends for a long time. He's like, hey, Michael, you know, uh, my house is going to be empty. I'm making this movie called Zombieland. And <laughs> if you want to come up there, and you can have the whole house to yourself and just write to your heart's content. And so I was like, sounds great. And he goes, it's a very creative place, bro. <laughs> I said, I'm in, man. I'm in. So, <laughs> I'm, in. Uh, so I, I'm, in, I'm in the bathroom and, and taking a shower, and I get an idea. You know, and you get an idea, and you're like, oh, shit, i got to write this down, you know. And I... I looked everywhere for a pen, I couldn't find one. And so uh, I go, oh, I know, I'll just write it on the steam, on the glass. So I start writing the whole thing out, and I'm like, oh, this is great, I feel really good, and I'm getting out of the shower, and, and uh, I look, and like the words are like evaporating in front of my eyes. So like, I grab my phone, I dive across the wet, it's like a Jackie Chan movie, like diving across the wet tile floor, like shh, snap a picture right before it goes away. And then I put it uh, in my computer to look to try to read it, and it was inside out and backwards. <laughs> and it, it took me like six days to flip it in Photoshop, you know. But um, and it sounded a lot better forwards than it did backwards, by the way. Um, and uh, so then Woody calls me, and he's like, Michael, hey, um, uh, you know, how's it going? I said, bro, can you call back? I'm, I'm on your toilet. And he goes, no, I just want to know how's the songwriting going. I said, I, I said, I think it's going pretty good. I think I may have written a hit song in your bathroom. And Woody says, is it a number one or a number two? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we, we had been playing, I had been playing music, uh, you know, professionally since 1987, and this was 2009, and we had never had a song in like the top 20,000. Like our best record was probably like double linoleum, you know, not not double platinum, you know. And so suddenly um, we had this song that um, um, it took a year of 
it went into the radio and it got a few little plays in the fall and when it was released and we were stoked we were like oh my god our song got on the radio it got played 10 times it's awesome and then it went away and then the next summer there was a dj who had, was on vacation with his family in mexico during the winter and he came back and he lived in green bay wisconsin which is a really cold place so as soon as the weather started to warm up there he's like hey i got this song it's got a great vibe i was listening to it at this at this uh, beach bar in mexico all week my kids love it you tell me what you think about it and right after this song by britney spears we're gonna play michael fronti and spirit <laughs> and so he put it on and suddenly, like, people started calling into the radio station, like, this is a great song, play it again, we play it again, play it again. And then, so it was like um, 20 years of overnight success, you know, and we had this song on the radio. And then that week that the song, like, finally cracked into the top 20, um, I get this message, like, you know, your song is, is in the top 20, and, and uh, my appendix ruptures. And I come close to dying because they didn't figure it out for seven days. So I'm in the hospital getting wheeled down in the gurney. At this point, and they're like, the song's going up. It's in the top 10 now. <laughs> and I'm looking at the doctor. I'm like, you better fucking fix me. <laughs> I want to hear my song on the radio one time. You know? <laughs> and so um, after the surgery came back, I was like, none of, it, none of it mattered. It was like, all I wanted was just to like, see my kids. Um, I was just so grateful to be alive and so, so just so happy, you know, to see Carl, um, see all the other guys in my band that I forgot about, like, the song. And it was just kind of like a wake-up call for me. It was like, God, you work really hard at something, and then you realize that the most important thing are the connections in your life. And that, that's, like, if I had one parting message to all y'all here and anybody that's at home that's watching or wherever you're watching, um, it's, that, it's that that's it. It's like sometimes, like, it's like in that film, As Good As We Get, with Jack Nicholson. He's like, this is, what if this is as good as it gets? <laughs> you know? And maybe this is it. It's like having lunch um, with your friends who are your workmates, who you spend maybe more time with sometimes some weeks than you do your kids or your, your wife, your, your lover at home, whatever. And um, maybe this is as good as it gets. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to every now and then just look to the person that you work with and go, man, I dig you being here. Thanks for thanks for being part of my life in this way, and and that's what this this song is really about. It's about how we go around the world and we we realize that you know the more we see, we sometimes we wake up and we go, I don't know shit. <laughs> you know? There's so much more to experience, and that's what this is about. I say, hey, I'll be gone today, but I'll be back coming around the way. See, like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. But I know one thing that I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I've been a lot of places all around the way. I've seen a lot of joy and I've seen a lot of pain, but I don't want to write a love song. For the world, I just want to write a song about a boy and a girl. Junkies on the corner, always calling my name. And the kids on the corner playing ghetto games. When I saw you getting down, girl, I hope it was you. And when I look into your eyes, I knew it was true. I say, hey, I'll be gone today. But I'll be back coming around the way. It seems like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. When I know one thing, that I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Are you ready, y'all? One, two, put your hands together. I say, hey, I'll be gone today. I'll be back coming around the way. Seems like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. I know one thing, that I love you. Baby girl, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now I'm not a highly metaphysical man, but I know when the stars are aligned you can Bump into a person in the middle of the road, look into the eyes and you suddenly know Rocking in the dance hall, moving with you, rockin', rockin'. dancing in the night or in the middle of June Yes, my mama told me don't lose you, cause the best luck I had was you I say, hey, I'll be gone today, I'll be back coming around the way Seems like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know But I know one thing that I love you, baby girl, I love you, 
love you, I love you. Put your hands up high, y'all. Rockin' in the dance hall, moving with you. Hey, mama, hey, mama. Close to you. Rockin' in the dance hall, moving with you. Hey, papa, hey, papa. Kick up your shoes. Rockin' in the dance hall, moving with you. Hey, mama, hey, mama. Close to you. Rockin' in the dance hall, moving with you. Well, my mama told me don't lose you, cause the best luck I had was you. And I know one thing that I love you. One, two, three, come on. I say, hey, I'll be gone today. I'll be back coming around the way. Seem like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. I know one thing that I love you, baby girl. I love you, I love you. I want to see everybody up on your feet dancing. Here we go now, come on. Make some noise I say, hey, I'll be gone today I'll be back coming around the way Seems like everywhere I go The more I see, the less I know But I know one thing That I love you, baby girl I love you, I love you, I love you. Friends, a hug. Give somebody a hug. There you go. Don't leave anybody out. Thanks for having us. We got we got one last song for you, and this song is a. Uh, does anybody here like to go camping? Yeah. Uh, I love camping. So the thing I love about camping is the campfire. You know, you get, you get all your food, you get all your friends, you get your fold-out chairs, you get your beverages and you're sitting all around you're talking and you're playing some music or if you're with me I'm playing some music and then <laughs> um, the campfire starts to burn down and then it's just like these tiny little embers left and you look over at your friend and like friend over here like she's asleep in the chair you know and <laughs> I look over at Carl and I'm like yo bro I know it's late I know the fire's like down to just this tiny little glow but you think we could get this thing started back up again <laughs> no it's cooked bro <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, I think I could do it. I think I can. Really? Yeah. How? What do you think? You think I can? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do? You go up really close to the fire, and whoo, you blow on it, and poof, it sparks back up. And then you get little needles, a little, you know, little... Not like, not like street needles, like pine needles. <laughs> There's pine needles on it. <laughs> and then, uh, God, this country is, is, is changing. Uh, he puts the pine needles, he put a little, little kindling and then a log on it, and then like you got this fire going again. And we as people are kind of like that. In fact, we as people are exactly like that. There's times when our fire starts to burn down, just become this little ember, and you're sitting there with yourself, you're going, man, I don't know if I'm gonna ever get this thing started back up again. And then something happens, or some gust that comes along, or somebody who is a friend of yours just comes up and says, I got you, and we dig you, and we want you here, and we value your creativity in our workplace, and we want you in our home, and you're important in our schools, and we love you, we love you. And then you see that spark just to start back up again. And sometimes we've got to be able to do it for ourselves so that we can do it for other people. And so I just want to say thank you for doing that for us today. It's been really fun to be here. And um, just on a personal note, you guys might not, you, you might not feel the effect of what you, of what you do here. But the effect of what you do here is it, it, it really does make a difference in the people, in the lives of people. Not only that, it's, it's historic. You know, there's never been a time in the world where the world had information at its, its fingertips in the way that it does now. 
And the next step is like for all of us to become uh, wise, to, to be able to decide which of the wisdom is important and which is not so important. And that's what we need to share with each other. So we need to share with our kids and, um, and keep that spirit of optimism and love and humanity and equality and diversity. Make sure that those things are center point in the world as the world just keeps be, uh, knowing more about itself and learning more about itself. So thank you for being that for the whole world, you guys. You guys make a difference. So yeah. This one goes like this. You woke up this morning, stumbled out of bed. You turned on the TV and it messed up your head. I understand that you feel hopeless. Now think of this instead. We're all in this together. You're my friend until the end. I know that you feel lonely, but you are not alone. There's a sacred place out there I know that we can go, where we'll be wrapped inside the music. Let it shake your bones. I promise you'll feel better by the time that you get home. Oh, when, when the sun begins to shine, when the sun begins to shine, We'll walk right through the darkness, out into the Man, light. I need you up here. Get up here. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Come on now. Shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. Shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. Oh, shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. Shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. They say there is no future, but they're still in the past. And I can see it coming and it's shaking And you'll ask me about the future And I tell you, everything is all all right All right Oh, when the sun begins to shine When the sun begins to shine We'll walk right through the darkness Out into the light When the sun Get out there and do something for me Here we go now, come on y'all Shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. Shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. Oh, shake me down, honey. Grab a partner. Shake me down tonight. There you go. Shake me down, honey. Shake me down tonight. Come on, play for us, man. so much for being here with us today. One more time, give it up for the mighty Victoria Canal. Follow her on Instagram. That's like Queen Victoria Panama Canal, Victoria Canal. <laughs> and over here, Carl Young on the bass. Thank you. Follow him on Instagram, that's Carl Young Music. Is that right, Carl Young yeah, Music? Yeah, Carl Young Music One. Carl Young Music One. I'm Michael Franti. Thanks so much. We love you. People up top, make some noise, y'all. Oh, when the sun begins to shine, when the sun begins to shine, we'll walk right through the darkness, out into the light. When the sun begins to shine. Thanks a lot, y'all. Who's got the camera? You're going to be over there? Are they going to be up there? Okay, cool.
If you want to be in the picture, come down. We'd love to have you.